Greg Doyle this very question. Hey, my man Greg Doyle, the star, joins us. Hey, Greg, let me ask you, because I don't know the answer to this, but I think I know everything. Is are the pace? Is this a matter of being tired, or is this a matter of not being talented enough, or both? I, I think last night had to be tired, because uh, tired, and, and maybe worse than tired, actually, is maybe their spirit got broken against by the Celtics just, yeah. just for 48, 48 hours. Now, I don't mean forever, but, but clearly... The Pacers, they have a track record that says they can beat and normally do beat teams like the Brooklyn Nets. So for them to lose by, well, they only lost by 12, but it wasn't that close. Um, that's not a talent issue. That's a, the Nets were desperate to win that game, and the Pacers didn't have much to play for, A, and B, are tired, and C, mailed it in. And so that's what happened. And I hope, as I, as I wrote, what we don't know is, are they out of gas, or was this a one-night blip? We, we will see soon enough. Do you like? I would I would argue they had something to play for. Certainly, given that the Celtics lost, right? I mean, but they felt they didn't. Well, now the Celtics' loss happened. I'm pretty sure that was after the Pacers' game. It was. Um, it was. It was. But still, but still, you raise the point. Until you're locked out of that right home number four seed, you, you've got something to play for. So, and they, I mean, Darren Collison played. I thought. That was talk about a message right there. Is that Collison didn't have to play in that game, but he came back and played. They're trying to win it, so they had they they had something to play for. Um, so when I said they didn't have anything to play for, I, I guess what I meant to say, and because I say things wrong a lot, what I meant to say is uh, the the Nets were just fired up as they can be because they were almost an elimination game. They got to win, whereas the Pacers didn't have to win A and B. The Celtics that game Friday night was so important, and they lost it so badly to the team that they're now going to see in five days, that may have been just crushing to their spirit. I don't know that, but that may have been what happened. I, I felt like that before the game. All my degenerates are like, hey, Pacers got to win. I'm like, I don't know, man. I don't know. I, I, I think that crushed them. And Nate McMillan even said, you know, hey, look, we had no energy to start. Like, it's all right to lose, is it not? But you can't lose a game that's determining a lot of things because you didn't come to play. Like, that that galls me. Is this Tariq Evans thing, is this is this just a bad move, wrong team? I am, um, when, they, when they signed Tariq Evans, and Google never forgets, and there's one thing I hate about Google, but if you Google, you know, Tariq Evans and my name, um, you'll find that I loved that signing. Loved it. Because me too. Because the stats... I mean, the stats, the yes. stats he's put up are ridiculous. Um, and I thought, man, if that's your second unit point guard, okay. Um, what I didn't know, what none of us knows, and we didn't know about Old Depot. I mean, we, we all thought we liked him and, you know, yada, yada, but nobody knew he was right. this kind of wonderful locker room presence. I mean, I'm not talking a good one. I mean, no one knew he was an all-time, like, whoa, um, until he's here. Well, I didn't know Tyreek Evans was a – whatever word you want to use, and it's not a good one, until he got here. But, I mean, that, it took that guy one week to get suspended, remember, because he was showing up late yep. to shoot around and, you know, whatever. And you watch him play, and I realize in the NBA today, and for 20 years, there's a lot of one-on-one ISO. There's a whole lot of, I'm going to go get mine. And at the end of the game, if all of our guys are selfish and got ours, scored more than all of your guys are selfish and got theirs, we win. That's kind of how the NBA often is. It's not who the Pacers are. Not who they are, um, but that's who Tyreek is. And I can't stand watching him play because watching him play is like watching um, one circle with a whole bunch of squares. Uh, he doesn't fit here, and I don't like it, and I don't like watching him play, and I was thrilled he wasn't playing last night. Cause every time he plays, I'm, t- I'm, determ- I'm tempted to just rip him. <laughs> every time right. I go to a game and Tyreek's there, I'm tempted to, like, I don't care what else happened. I'm just going to rip Tyreek tonight because I can't stand watching him play. So, anyway, I was it, was it the wrong – Fit, yeah, and Pritchard's been so good. I mean, he's been so good, and kind of like when Ballard every now and then, you know, the Zach Banner draft pick. I mean, Ballard's not perfect, and we're going to notice when he's not perfect, and it's okay. But just when if I'm going to rip a guy or rip a signing as bad as I'm ripping the Tyreek Evans ones, I want I do need to say that by and large he's been really really good. I, I agree. I, look, I, I agree, and I, I but I don't, I think the West Matthews behind the scene things I'm hearing is, is not great either. Where he's you know was promised to start and blah 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 blah. I I I'm not. That hasn't been great either, right? I mean, I don't. Maybe I, I wonder if if Wesley was if he was promised to start, 
that implies that, that someone else should be starting instead of him. Who would that someone else be, though? No one. Tyreek right. Evans, I, mean, I suppose, but right, nobody. Right. right. If right. Wesley was brought here to Garrett, and they promised him a starting spot, which means they promised the fact that Tyreek won't start, then I love it even more. Um, <laughs> Wesley, you know, the, the thing about, um, and Wesley was, and I don't know him very well uh, at all, but when he was at Marquette, he was beloved as a guy. So I, I that, that's his rep that I knew coming out of college. Um but like you never know when it, when confidence and calmness you don't know if that's sometimes if that's a great great quality or if there are times where your confidence and your calmness is actually at this moment kind of aloof and arrogant and that's a mistake and I'm not I'm not saying that's what happened last night but I am saying I don't know because he was asked afterwards you know is uh, is there time for concern and he goes I don't scare easily nothing to be concerned about and I guess there's a phrase whistling past the graveyard which is when you know you're scared to death, but you just kind of pretend you don't, hope no one notices. Um, the, 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 not that, well, what I'm saying is the Pacers just had their, pretty much their two back-to-back worst games of the year at the absolute worst time of the year, capping a run where they've lost 9 of 12. So it's all falling apart at the worst possible time. I'm not sure today's the day and last night's the night for Wesley Matthews to say, I don't scare easily, nothing wrong here. Man, if you don't know something's wrong, then you can't fix it. Because something is wrong, and look for it to be wrong, and then fix it. Because if you just kind of think it's okay, you're screwed. Yeah, the only thing you hope is that the Celtics have more wrong. You know? I mean, they- oh, can can we can we be honest about this? Um, I, gosh, I, this is so obvious that I hope no one's got to be saying this. The Pacers winning or losing this series with the Celtics is going to have very little to do with the Pacers. Um, because the Celtics, if they step on the gas, the Pacers can't keep up. I mean, it's, it's kind of like if you're at the Indy 500 and, you know, Pippa Mann is a quality driver, but, but the, the tools she has, the car, the, I mean, she doesn't have the money. She can't beat Penske. So if Pippa Mann ever beats um, Joseph Newgarden, that's probably more about Newgarden and his team because something went wrong. So if the Pacers beat the Celtics four times in seven games, that's on Penske because the, in this scenario, the Celtics, they're Penske, and shame on them for even being a four seed. I mean, shame on the Celtics, and I love Brad Stevens, so I'm not, I don't understand why. I don't know. I mean, Kyrie Evans is apparently such a disruptive, pouting force that even the greatness of Brad Stevens, and that is greatness, you know, the, the immovable force and the irresistible object, if Kyrie Evans is one of those two, Kyrie wins, and by that I mean Kyrie loses. I, I, we need Kyrie to just go nuts here in the next couple days. Like, just, <laughs> just like, be an idiot. Do something stupid. I, I don't know, but just do something where you cause angst uh, to, to your operation. All right, people that whenever Greg comes on, I always say this. Greg was college basketball uh, senior columnist, the columnist for CBS Sports for a long time. When you see that this Michael Avenatti coming out, and maybe he's crazy, maybe he's not, maybe I assume he's going to have back up what he's saying, and Duke is involved, what are your thoughts? Uh, well, there's, there's several. One is, and they're, and they're competing, but, but I mean, I guess, uh, in, in like, like a lot of times, I, I kind of, sometimes I see both sides too much, but there's two sides here. One is, people hate Duke, people want to hate Duke, and people will throw stuff against the wall and, and just say ne- negative things. And Lord knows I've done it on Twitter myself. I've done it a few times. Duke people don't like me. So there's a whole faction of, of us that want to bring Duke down because we're just sick of them winning. We're sick of Coach K. We're just sick of it. Um, having said that, uh, for a guy to put his name on something as loudly as Avenatti's putting his name on something, um, you know, the, the thing about libel lawsuits is you've got to, when you're as famous as Coach K is, you can't just win a libel lawsuit because someone's wrong. You've got to prove malice. You've got to prove they knew they were wrong and they did it because they don't like you. And so I'm not sure libel lawsuit-wise if Coach K can win if he's innocent of everything that Avenatti is saying Duke has done. So Avenatti, he might be playing with house money. Like, I can throw out these accusations. I, they're not going to win a lawsuit against me. I'll just say, oops, I was wrong, didn't know. So I don't know. But it's, there's a lot of smoke there. There's been a lot of smoke around Duke for a long time, I mean, there's been when I was covering and Duke, people didn't like me. But when I was covering Duke, they had a bunch of their players, their families. I think it was Carlos, well, Carlos Boozer's one of his parents, and Chris Duhon's mom back in their early aughts. Their families moved 
to Durham and got jobs in Durham, I'm pretty sure with Duke Boosters, and could be clean, could be legal. I'm not saying it was dirty, but NCAA, like they always do, said nothing to see here and didn't see anything. You know, Corey McGetty was paid money in high school by an AAU coach and played on a team that was in the Final Four. They didn't vacate that banner. Um, nothing to see here because it's Duke. Lance Thomas, when he was there, um, I don't have the details, but I, I mean, I've written about it, so I know that yeah. there are details. I've written them. I just don't remember them right now. But Lance Thomas, five, six, seven years ago, something about a $25,000 necklace, and uh, there's, there's facts out there. And the facts are, if you want to look at them a certain way, instead like could have looked at them a certain way and said, boom. Instead, they looked at it and said, nothing to see here. So that's really galling to a lot of people. I think Avenatti is galled that NCAA never sees anything with Duke. There's a lot of smoke, and maybe there's no fire. Maybe there's never been anything to see. But there's a lot of smoke. There was a huge article. It was in Louisiana. I don't know if it was in the New Orleans paper or the Baton Rouge paper or the whatever. Exactly what you said about Duhon and about Boozer and Trajan Langdon. and They had it. And, Greg, I'd never seen anything like it. It just went away, and no one ever brings it up. It's unbelievable to me. It really is. It, well, it's – and that's – you know, the old joke is the NCAA was so mad at Duke, they went and, and, and made me stay three more years. Right, probably. right. You know, that's just kind of what happens. Look what happened just this week with IU football. Um, they had a transfer from Utah named Tuttle, Jack Tuttle, and they tried to see if he could be eligible right away, and they applied to the NCAA and, and heard crickets for six, seven, eight months. Meanwhile, Miami of Ohio, I'm sorry, Miami of Florida, and I believe it's Ohio State, both those schools uh, had quarterbacks transfer after Tuttle and got the answer from the NCAA already that, yes, they're eligible. Meanwhile, IU was still waiting. And finally, we at the Star, and well, Tom Allen talked about it at Spring Day. Star wrote about it, and, and we're here in Indianapolis, and, and a lot of us, including me, made fun of the NCAA, like, come on, NCAA, let's go. Well, they finally got Jack Tuttle eligible, finally. The point is, is that they take care of their cash cow. And Duke's a cash cow, and Alabama football, Ohio State football, Miami football is a cash cow. And so there's clearly a pecking order, and it's not right. But even an idiot, and I'm talking about myself, can see that what's happening here, they take care of their own. Greg, when I was with Coach Knight, he used to call Tom Jernstead at the NCAA and just get stuff done. And I, I kind of thought that's what you did. Like, I thought I'm a member. So I go to Bowling Green, and I try to call to get, you know, information on something. Holy hell. <laughs> I think I'm still waiting for return phone calls from the end. And I remember thinking, damn, aren't we in the same, like, you know, under the same umbrella here? What the hell? And, yeah, I know when, yeah, sorry. No, go ahead. Well, when I was, I've worked in several papers along the way in different jobs. When I was the Charlotte Observer, I'd make phone calls and, and wouldn't get callbacks, and I moved to CBSSports.com, and, and all of a sudden I was getting callbacks. People were inviting me to dinners, and <laughs> did I, all of a sudden did I get more popular? Am I cooler now than I ever? Oh no, I get it. It's, it's where I work, and, and 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 even right now, the job I have now is. I mean, that's, I, I've got access, and this is going to come off as bragging, and I don't mean it this way. In fact, I'm, I'm this is this is exact opposite of bragging. But I've got access to a lot of people in the state, coaches and 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 elected officials, and and they take my calls. And and I'm not stupid. It's not because I'm cool. It's not because my personality is wonderful. It's none of that. It's because the Indy Star, sports columnist, whoever that person is, uh, people, you know, they try to be nice to that guy. And I'm just lucky enough to be that guy. So I'm. That's just the way it goes. And sometimes you're the hammer, <laughs> and sometimes you're the nail. Sounds like you you were the nail a little while ago. Every now and then I'm the hammer, but I'm not. I'm not dumb enough to think I was born a hammer. I I'm, I realize this is not about me. No, I, 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 I get it. They fly out to play golf with Billis. I mean, they've tried so hard to get Billis to, you know, it's like if Billis wants a free lunch, all you got to do is fly to Indy, and these guys will take him anywhere he wants to go and do whatever the hell it is he wants to do. But they'll let you. Hey, listen, if you want to carry their bags and hand them a seven iron, they'll let you to be their caddy. <laughs> no, I know you're bigger than that stuff. No, I don't want a caddy, but I, I, I do want to. I, I do. I, all right, let me go in another direction with you. Yeah. Um, when you look at Indiana, now you wrote the article and uh, uh, what's his face and uh, Jackson and all that stuff, and that's great. 
But I go back to 1991, I think it was, when the hype started for recruits at Indiana. I swear to God, a magazine called Inside Indiana started, and it used to drive us back blank crazy. Um, and the hype is too much for Indiana recruits. Everybody needs to let it go and stop talking and start playing. That's it. Kill me now, please. That story you, you're talking about, the Trace Jackson Davis story, um, that was what I wrote was me trying to not hype him up too much. Um, <laughs> I, I swear, I, I called several coaches that I, that I respect, you know, college coaches, um, who I knew have either tried to recruit Trace or, or backed out or bailed out or didn't win him, but, but knew his game better than I know it. Certainly, as a, as a coach, knows a lot more about this than I do. But I told him, here's what I just saw, and I realize he's dunking on people and and that doesn't, you know, just because people dunk in AU games, yeah. it's not that easy. But there are some guys that they're so good that they're going to dunk on you in high school, and they're going to college, and they're going to dunk on you there, and they might even go to the NBA, and they're going to dunk on you there. Um, case in point, real quick, is I, when Dwight, and I'm not comparing to Dwight Howard. I'm just trying to make the analogy of, sure. of where I've been. When I covered Dwight Howard at an AU event 14 years ago, he was dunking on everybody, but that's all he was doing. And I didn't, I missed it. I didn't realize a guy that big shouldn't move like that He's not just—he's he, not just capitalizing on an all-star event. He's—he's he's different from everybody else, and I missed it. I mean, I knew he was good, but I didn't realize he was like a number one overall pick out of high school. So I'm—I'm I'm trying. And again, Trace Jackson—he's not that. But am, am I missing something here? Is he—is he not just dunking? But is he going to dunk on people at the next level too? Is my question. And I got mixed results, but he—just the way he moves with that body—it's—I um, mean, it's—it's it's, it's rather startling to see a guy that big move that fast. And I'm going to bring up another name, and I tried to write this, and I tried to write it five different times, and five took it out because I knew nobody would get it, and everybody would kill me for saying it. And I don't mean it the way it's going to come out. Uh, and I know on Twitter I'm about to get ripped for this, but what the hell with it. Um, I, when I'm talking to Trace Jackson Davis, I said to him, has anybody ever said the word to you, Giannis? And he smiled oh. and nodded and said, now again, I'm not, tell, I'm not, I'm not <laughs> saying he's Giannis. Okay, um, it's kind of it's kind of like look. I I used to tell people I look like Robert Redford when I was younger. Yeah, we both had blonde hair and we're five ten and white. Um, it, that you know, there's, there's there's levels of comparisons. But my point with him was that he gets from point A to point B at the high school level in a way that no one else does. Like he takes one bounce and goes thirty feet and can do do that against kids. Um, and he said, yeah, people have told him that before that he does that at the high school level he said but the difference is Giannis is seven foot nine and i'm not and i realize that he's not he's not seven four but his wingspan is seven two but i mean he's not going to be an nba all-star i don't think um he's not going to be maybe one of the greatest players of all time he's none of that but he moves in a way that nobody else in the court moves that way so at the high school level he's Giannis like if that makes sense Oh, I no, I totally get. I look, I I totally get. I, you know, to me, I, 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 Sean Kemp. We were recruiting Sean Kemp. He came just to hang out one afternoon. He was in jeans. He dunked it with his ear, and I'm like, well, I don't need to see him. Anymore. That's pretty good. <laughs> and again, I'm not comparing, you know, Jackson Davis to Sean Kemp. I'm just saying you just did. That's, you just did. You just I know to Sean Kemp in the world. I know. Up. I'm ripping the whole hype thing of Indiana basketball, and here I am saying that he's he's Sean Kemp. But no, sometimes you can. I don't know. I just know that me personally, I'm like, God, it, it, it goes back to 92. Like this inside Indiana, every kid that we signed was like, oh, God, it, you know, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, and even then we're like, just shut up and let people play. and figure. But that's not the world we live in, and I know that. I mean, hell, who wins the national championship game tonight? I always answer questions like this with who I want to win. Uh, it's why I'm a lousy fan. I try not to be a fan. But who wins tonight is Virginia uh, because I want them to win, and so I can't foresee them not winning. Kyle Guy, and I, I want them to win. I want Kyle Guy to do what he did the other night. I want him to do it again. I want him to hit. I want him to go all Reggie Miller on, on, on Texas Tech and, and get eight points in eight seconds tonight. He had six and six the other night. I want eight and eight tonight, and, and I want Kyle Guy to happily ever after because I think that kid's great. And I like Tony Bennett. And I got no problem with Texas Tech, but. I just, I mean, what a great story it'd be for the world, but also for Tony Bennett and, and Kyle Guy specifically. I want them to win. Have you ever, and you've got Greg Doyle with the star joining us, real quick, have you ever seen a guy, no pun intended, cooler in that situation than Kyle Guy was externally? I'm sure he was dying inside and he said he was terrified and all that, but have you ever seen anybody, anybody cooler in that situation? 
No, he just stood there, and I actually I, I rewound it and watched his face. I wanted to see, like, is there going to be a little tell in here somewhere? I already know he makes the shots. I'm rewinding it. But, but now looking back, I'm going to look for nerves. Didn't see him. The, the, now, he allowed himself one little freak-out moment. Um, he got fouled, and immediately he pulls the shirt up over his face, and he says, oh, my G-O-D. I think that's what he said. And at that moment, I think it all hit him, like, oh, my gosh, this is about to happen. I think at that moment it hit him, but he regrouped. And, I mean, he's that was, that was some ice water stuff there. It was beautiful to watch. And I'm just living and dying with the free throws, living and dying until he made all three. I was living and dying, but very happy. I, I, uh, spoiler alert, I lived. <laughs> That's how I lost high school champ- uh, state championship. No classes, no Catholic school, kid missed two free throws, no time on the clock. That's how we oh, lost. Oh, you needed, you needed Ollie on your team. Ollie goes the greatest out <laughs> and makes them both. And you're the great. Yeah, and the greatest. We still make fun of him for it, too. It's all good. What are you going to do? And all right, my you, friend. I appreciate you. you. Thank you. All right, Dan. Yep, bye. See you. Uh... Oh, we'll be back. Everybody needs Ollie. Come on. This month, the Home Depot is bringing garden-to-table dining.